Hey, welcome everybody, it is Caleb. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the new keyword, working with memory in C++, and a little bit on pointers. So, a lot of new concepts if you've never learned any of these before, but before we get started, you need to check out our sponsor. Visual Assist is your go-to Visual Studio plugin to improve your C++ code and increase productivity. With Code Assistance, you can code away as Visual Assist fixes mistakes and suggests auto-completions. Comprehensive code refactoring allows you to simplify and modernize complex code, while code analysis will scan your code for common errors and style violations. The end result is not only a better coding experience, but better code that's easier to maintain and easier to build upon. Give Visual Assist a try by following the link in the description. Now before you jump into the new keyword, you should first understand pointers. Now I know it's always like, oh to understand this you have to understand a hundred other things. So I decided I was just going to give a really quick crash course on how to create a pointer and use a pointer. If you need more details, check out my pointer video. If you already did, then go ahead and skip this part if you want. But basically, when you create a variable, it's going to have a type, it's going to have an identifier, which is the name of the variable, and then the value. And you can think of it as some value in memory, and you can refer to it as x. When you create a pointer, it's a different type. So it's going to look like this, int, and then an asterisk, and then the identifier. And the spacing, this can be beside the integer or it can be beside the identifier, doesn't really matter. Or you could have spaces on both sides. And what this is going to contain is a memory address. So let's say you want this memory address, then you would use the address of operator and then the variable x. So that is going to assign the memory address of x to this pointer variable. So once we got that, how do we actually use it? Well, if we wanted to get this value through the pointer, so now we have this pointer here that points to this data, we can use the asterisk again. So if we wanna get that value, what we could do is, let's say we wanna output it, we just say asterisk y, that is called dereferencing the pointer, and that's going to give us the value five. If you ever see y by itself in this case, that's just referring to the pointer. This is a memory address. So if you're new to pointers, this is probably a lot of information. So make sure you check out the detailed video if you need. Now, where does new come in? Well, if you wanted to use the new in this scenario, it would go right here. You would say new int, and then in parentheses, you would put the value. And this is actually a different type. It's a pointer now, so you need that asterisk. So here we have an integer pointer and it points to the value five. This is going to be put on a different area of memory. Instead of the stack, it's going to be created on the heap. I wouldn't worry too much about that right now, but the main thing you need to know is that when we do this, we have to manually free this memory. And the way you would do that is you would just say delete and then the variable you wanna delete X just by itself. So that is the basics of how to use new. You're not very often gonna see it with just integers here. It's more often seen when you're working with objects. So you create a class and you wanna instantiate that class into an object. Well, it might look something like this. User u is a new user. And this is something you often see in other programming languages if you're coming from C Sharp or Java or something. Inside of C++, this new here is going to return a pointer. So you need that asterisk there. And this is not really the recommended way of creating new users. In fact, the proper way would be more like this. User u, and then you can just work with that user by saying u.name as an example, like so. However, you are often going to run into this new keyword. So if by chance you have to you do it this way, what you're gonna have now is a pointer. So if you want to work with that object's attributes, you would say, dereference u, put that in parentheses, and then dot name. So that is how you would work with the data. And I think this is just because of a operator precedence thing here. So if you don't put the parentheses, it's going to do it in the wrong order. So this is a little obnoxious, so there's a shorthand way of doing this. And what you can do is you can just say u, the pointer, and then the arrow operator, which is a dash and then the greater than sign name. 
So that is how you could work with it on the pointer directly. It's just a little bit prettier than this technique. So you're gonna see that a lot whenever you're passing around objects that are, are defined dynamically using the new keyword. Just remember whenever you're done, you need to say delete you. <laughs> I'm gonna delete you. All right, so now you got the basics of this. Where are you gonna see this a lot? So another common use for this is to make a dynamic array when you want to decide how many elements it contains at runtime. So for example, if you're getting user input and you're not sure how many times you're gonna to have to do that, you can use dynamic memory to increase the size of an array. So for example, if you're getting user input, you're not sure how many elements you're gonna have, well, you could ask the user how many elements and size that memory appropriately. This works and you'll see that occasionally, but what I would recommend is to use a vector. It's basically a dynamic array that's going to do all of that behind the scenes. And that's just standard vector. And then you put the type in less than greater than signs, such as int. And then you give it a name, data. And if you're using C++11, you can use the initialization syntax like so. And you can add elements dynamically by saying data dot push back and then pass in data like so. So that's the recommended way. Instead of using new with arrays, this is what I would recommend. You also just need to make sure you include vector. So you'll probably see this more often than dynamic arrays using new. However, you might run into both. There are some other alternative ways of doing it, but that's all I'm gonna talk about in this video. So thank you everyone. If you want some more hands-on examples of this, check out the next video, because we're going to basically go over this content again, but on the computer, typing it out. And this is exactly how I type with one finger just all over the place. Two fingers, I guess. All right, anyways, thank you, and please be sure to subscribe.